the nightly business report good evening tonight sri lanka's tea exports for the month of july have exceeded 21 million kilograms this figure represents a year on year decline of 6.2% when compared to the same period in the previous year the new luxury shuttle service which was recently launched to provide passenger transport services from the Bandarnaika International Airport has been temporarily suspended. The negative trend that emerged at the end of last week on the Colombo Stock Exchange appears to be continuing, with this week starting on a downward trajectory. And General Motors lays off more than 1,000 employees worldwide, with the cuts consisting of salaried employees at its software and services unit. From Studio 24, Here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. The tea exports for the month of July this year totaled 21.35 million kilograms, showing a 6.2% year-on-year decline. The bulk and packaged tea shows negative variances, whilst tea bags have recorded a marginal gain in comparison with the corresponding month of the previous year. The fee on board value in July 2024 was recorded at 1773 rupees and 70 cents an increase of 158 rupees and 39 cents year on year compared to 1615 rupees and 30 cents in July last year all main categories have recorded a positive variances in both the Sri Lankan rupee and US dollar terms cumulative exports from January to July 2024 totaled 140.47 million kilograms marking an increase of 5.48 million kilograms compared to the 134.99 million kilograms exported during the same period in last year. The tea packets, instant tea and green tea have recorded negative variances, while tea in bulk and tea bags have shown positive variances against the same period of the previous year. All categories showed negative variances in Sri Lankan rupee terms in the FOB value, while gain were recorded in the US dollar terms when compared to the corresponding period in 2023. Iraq ranks as the largest import of Ceylon tea, with a total of 17.84 million kilograms, a marginal decline of 2% year-on-year year in January to July 2024 against the previous year's 18.29 million kilograms. The new luxury shuttle service, which was recently launched to provide passenger transport services from the Bandarnaika International Airport to the Colombo Fort Railway Station and the Multipodal Transport Centre in Markumbara, has been temporarily suspended, effective from yesterday. The relevant luxury bus service was initiated on the 15th of August. However, it had faced immediate protests on the very same day. Specifically, the airport Ford Bus Employees Union had launched a bus strike on the 16th of August against the newly initiated luxury airport shuttle service. In addition to this, the union had also lodged complaints with the Minister of Transport and Highways as well as the Elections Commission. The BIA Taxi Service Association has also expressed their support to the protest campaigns. Accordingly, after considering the concerns put forward, it has been decided to temporarily suspend the airport terminal shuttle service after only four days of operation. President of the Airport Ford Bus Employees Union, Indika Gunasekara, said that instead of suspended luxury shuttle service, it is expected to allocate 10 of the union's buses from Bandaranaik International Airport to the Colombo Ford Railway Station and the Multimodal Transport Centre in Makubura. <laughs> According to the latest data released by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, the country earned $328.3 million through the tourism industry in July of this year. As a result, total earnings from tourism for the first seven months of the year have risen to $1.88 billion. US dollars. This represents a remarkable 72.3% increase compared to the $1.09 billion US dollars earned during the first seven months of 2023. Compared in the recent years, Sri Lanka earned $1.13 billion in 2022 and $2.06 billion in 2023 from tourism. The highest foreign exchange earnings from tourism in Sri Lanka were recorded in 2018, amounting to $4.38 billion. US dollars. In that year, the total number of tourists who visited the country was 2.33 million. According to Sri Lankan Tourism Development Authority, as of the 14th of August this year, the total number of tourists who have visited the country has surpassed 1.28 million. 
LTL Holdings Limited in Sri Lanka and Petronet LNG Limited in India entered into a memorandum of understanding today for liquefied natural gas infrastructure development and supply. Both companies jointly submitted a proposal to the Ministry of Power and Energy, which the Cabinet approval has been granted following the evaluation of a technical evaluation committee. This memorandum of understanding signing ceremony marked a significant milestone in Sri Lanka's journey toward a cleaner and more sustainable power generation. The event was graced by Minister Kanchana Vijayasekara, who is the Minister of Power and Energy, and His Excellency Dr. Satyanjal Pandey, the Deputy High Commissioner of India for Sri Lanka, and other esteemed guests representing the entities. This MOU covers for a joint development by LTL and PLL to develop necessary infrastructure and supply of liquefied natural gas for initially for Sobadana V power plant at Keravalapitiya, which will be commissioned shortly. Minister Kanchan Vijay Sekara, who was looking for reducing the generation cost to pass such benefit to the Sri Lankan electricity consumers, guided both entities and power authority to expedite a workable solution and in the implementation process. This collaborative partnership will develop facilities to import LNG to Colombo port via ISO containers from Petronet's Kochi terminal in India as an interim solution to supply LNG to the Sobadanavi power plant. Let's take a short commercial break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The negative strike which appeared last Friday at the Colombo Stock Exchange after a prolonged period of gains seems to be continuing as today's market ended with losses as well. Both the indices recorded a downturn but were trading in a mix for the most part of today's trading session. To get today's market summary, we now join with Nagusan Balachanturan from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange concluded on a mixed note compared to the previous trading session. The ASPI ended at 11,494 points, marking a 9.46 point decrease from the previous session, with a turnover of 580 million rupees. However, the S&P SL20 index, which tracks the 20 largest companies in the market, experienced an upward movement of 6 points to end the day at 3,307 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with the high turnovers recorded on the Ceylon Tobacco Company and Aitken Spence PLC, along with a crossing of 51 million Lankan rupee recorded on John Keyes Holdings. The top five gainers for the day were Industrialized Falls, Samsung International, Apico Insurance, Lanka Ashok Leyland and Pegasus Hotels PLC. The top five losers for the day were Amara Takafu, Tesagro PLC, Radiant Gems International, Odell PLC and EML Consultants PLC. Will this negative sentiment dominate the upcoming days of the week or will it be able to strike back to the positive territory? Well, we pose that question to Zaima Jahan who is connecting with us from First Capital Holdings. The Colombo stock market has displayed some sizable volatility over the last couple of weeks uh, amidst the uncertainties. Uh, so during the upcoming weeks, we are expecting to see uh, some stabilization in the ASPI, uh, although there is still some room for volatility. Uh, and broadly, investors are still seeking a clear direction uh, with the upcoming elections. And uh, on the other hand, market volume is uh, still at a very weak level ranging between 13 to 25 million. However, uh, these levels will pick up as the investors continue to trade on some uh, selected, fundamentally strong counters. Uh, also, market participants uh, seem to be adopting a wait and see approach, uh, closely watching updates uh, regarding the external debt restructuring uh, for further guidance. And additionally, uh, the recent rise in interest rates at the primary auctions has uh, prompted investors to turn their attention to safer investment choices. Uh, we expect this uh, subdued sentiment to extend to some time given the uncertainties stemming from the political landscape in the country. Uh, and in the meantime, Commercial Bank PLC has raised uh, 22.54 billion rupees from a rights issue to increase its uh, tier 1 capital and total capital to facilitate the uh, future business growth. And uh, as per the sources, this was the largest uh, rights issue to date by a bank in the country. 
and uh, this rights issue came a month after the bank raised 20 billion rupees uh, through a debenture issue. Gold held steady near its record high today as investors awaited U.S. Federal Reserve minutes and Chair Jerome Powell's speech for indications on how much the central bank will cut rates this year. Spot gold was flat at $2,503.05 per ounce, slightly below an all-time high of $2,509.65 hit on Friday. U.S. gold futures were nearly unchanged at $2,540.90. Gold prices have rallied more than 20% so far this year on optimism that the Fed will begin cutting interest rates in September, while robust central bank buying and safe haven demand stemming from the Middle East tensions. Oil prices edged lower today as Israel accepted a proposal to tackle disagreements blocking a ceasefire deal in Gaza. East supply concerns and China's economic weakness weighed on the demand outlook as well. Brent crude was down 80 cents or 1.03 percent at $76.86 per barrel. Front month U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude futures were down 87 cents or 1.17 percent to $73.50. The more actively traded second month WTI contract was last down 80 cents or 1.09 percent at $72.86 a barrel. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said yesterday that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had accepted a bridging proposal presented by Washington to tackle disagreements blocking a ceasefire deal in Gaza and urged Hamas to do the same. The Sri Lankan rupee has depreciated slightly against the US dollar today compared to last week, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the US dollar has increased from 294 rupees and 31 cents to 294 rupees and 36 cents, while the selling rate has increased from 303 rupees and 52 cents to 303 rupees and 57 cents. The rupee has also depreciated against a basket of foreign currencies, while it has a appreciated against Gulf currencies. Let's check these exchange rates now. A short break now, the corporate sector coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The Commercial Bank of Ceylon PLC has announced that it has successfully completed the largest rights issue to date by a bank in Sri Lanka, raising 22.54 billion rupees to increase the tier one and total capital of the bank to accommodate and facilitate future business growth. The bank said it has received applications for 266,079,848 Odeon devoting shares to the value of 22.6 billion rupees and 17,346,959 ordinary non-voting shares to the value of 1.19 billion rupees at the conclusion of the rights issue. Commercial Bank ended the first half of 2024 with gross loans and advances of 1.36 trillion rupees, a growth of 67.5 billion rupees or 5.21 over six months at a monthly average of 11.26 billion rupees. Loan book growth over the preceding 12 months was 175.7 billion rupees, averaging to 14.65 billion rupees per month. Commercial Bank's record breaking rights issue came just a month after the bank raised 20 billion via a debenture issue, also the largest ever by a private sector bank in Sri Lanka. Commercial Bank is the largest private sector bank in Sri Lanka and the first Sri Lankan bank to be listed among the top 1000 banks of the world. The bank is the largest lender to Sri Lanka's SME sector. 
Nations Trust Bank and American Express are building excitement for the upcoming Christmas season by offering its card members the chance to win a trip to the Prague Christmas market. This destination is renowned for its festive atmosphere and historical charm during the festivity season. From the 1st of August to the 30th of September 2024, Nations Trust Bank and American Express card members have the opportunity to enhance their chances of winning through their spending. For every cumulative 50,000 rupees spent during this period, card members will earn multiple entries into the draw. The total amount need not to be from a single transaction, whether through several smaller purchases or one larger one, as long as the total reaches 50,000 rupees. Card members can increase their chances of winning by that way. At the conclusion of the campaign, one fortunate winner and their companion will be selected to embark on an enchanting journey courtesy of partnership with Classic Travel. The price is a trip to Prague Christmas Market, one of Europe's most renowned holiday markets. Located in the heart of Prague's Old Town Square, the market is famed for its beautiful decorated wooden huts offering traditional Czech crafts, festive foods and holiday gifts. Haley's Aventura, a subsidiary of Haley's PLC and a leading provider of premier and comprehensive industrial solutions through global partnerships, has partnered with Commercial Bank to offer easy payment plans for its credit card holders. The easy payment plan offers customers an extended repayment period up to 60 months on Haley Aventura's products and service offerings. Amidst challenging domestic and global economic conditions, this strategic partnership and enables commercial bank credit card holders to make payments in equal monthly installments. Transactions ranging from a minimum of 25,000 rupees up to 1 million rupees qualify for the easy payment plan. Haley's PLC retained its national long-term rating of AAA by Fitch Ratings, attesting to the group's strong financial stability and resilient earnings profile. The rating is upheld by the group's extensive operating scale, diversification across business verticals, geographies and globally leading market positions in several key businesses. The group also delivered an impressive performance over the quarter of the fiscal year ending on the 31st of March 2025 recording revenue and profit before tax growth of 17% and 150% respectively. The moderate performance of the group's exported-oriented sector was countered by strong growth in verticals catering the domestic market, underscoring the diversity and resilience of the group's earnings. Meanwhile, the group's gross profit increased by 15%, with the gross profit margin maintained at 23%. A centerpiece of the Sri Lankan economy, Haley's a public-listed entity, is Sri Lanka's most diversified conglomerate with a global footprint spanning 18 countries in five regions. Unmatched human capital and relationships have aptly positioned the Haley's group to leverage emerging opportunities. Haley's is a champion of sustainable innovation and represents one of Sri Lanka's most prominent success stories. Dilshan Rodrigo has been appointed as the Chief Executive Officer of Sri Lanka's Union Bank of Colombo PLC with effect from the 16th of August. This is according to a stock exchange filing by the bank. He replaces Indrajit Asela Vikramasinghe, who retired from the office of Chief Executive Officer as well as the Board of Union Bank on the 15th of this month. Rodrigo said in an interview that Union Bank will refocus efforts to drive retail and SME businesses by leveraging on the 61 branches spread across the country. He further added that they have ambitious balance sheet growth targets over the short to medium term to establish themselves as a mainstream bank in Sri Lanka. The bank stated that Rodrigo does not hold any shares of the bank as date. Union Bank proudly announced a new memorandum of understanding with the University of Muratua and the National Innovation Agency to support the National Entrepreneurship Development Program. This initiative is aimed at empowering small and medium-scale enterprises and youth who are aspiring to become entrepreneurs across Sri Lanka. The memorandum of understanding was signed in the presence of Nirvana Chaudhary, chairman of the Union Bank, Dilshan Rodrigo, the newly appointed CEO of Union Bank, and Senior Professor N. D. Gunavardhana, who is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Moratua. This initiative aligns with the Union Bank School of Social Entrepreneurship's vision to develop, support, and promote social entrepreneurs while providing essential access to finance. This strategic partnership draws inspiration from the Nabil SSC Initiative, a renowned entrepreneurship development program spearheaded by Nabil Bank, 
which is Nepal's largest private commercial bank of the CG Corp Global Group, who is the major shareholder of Union Bank. The NADP certificate course aims to equip participants with the skills and knowledge needed to launch and grow their social enterprises. The program will be open to Sri Lankan citizens aged 18 and above who are passionate about driving social change and demonstrate a commitment to advance in their social enterprise ideas. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks rose today, tracking an overnight rally on Wall Street as markets cheered the prospect of lower U.S. interest rates before a key address from Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell later this week. But Chinese markets lagged their regional peers after the People's Bank kept its benchmark loan prime rate unchanged as expected, disappointing some traders holding out for more surprise cuts from the central bank. Japanese stocks were the the best performers in Asia with the Nikkei 225 index rising 1.8% and coming in sight of a three-week high. Gains in Australian markets were limited as the minutes of the Reserve Bank of Australia's August meeting showed that the bank had considered a rate hike amid concerns over sticky inflation. U.S. stocks closed higher, extending their rally ahead of the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium. The rally builds on the U.S. stock market's biggest weekly gains of the year, in which the three major indexes jumped between 2.9% and 5.3%. U.S. stocks closed higher on Monday, building on their largest weekly percentage gain of the year, as investors focused on the central bank's upcoming Jackson Hole Economic Symposium. The Dow climbed nearly six-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 added almost one percent, and the Nasdaq rose roughly 1.4 percent. The S&P and Nasdaq extended their winning streak to eight consecutive sessions, rebounding from a steep sell-off two weeks ago driven by recession fears. Recent data has shown consumer resiliency despite economic softening, boosting expectations that the Fed will start lowering interest rates at its September policy meeting. Stocks on the move Monday included tech giants Microsoft and Alphabet, which both ended higher, and AI darling NVIDIA, which climbed more than 4 percent. Speaking of NVIDIA, fellow chipmaker Advanced Micro Devices is hoping to better compete with the AI powerhouse, announcing plans to acquire server maker ZT Systems for $4.9 billion. Shares of AMD rose 4.5%. General Motors is laying off more than 1,000 employees worldwide. The automaker confirmed the cuts consisted of salaried employees at its software and services unit. General Motors is laying off more than 1,000 employees worldwide. The automaker confirmed the cuts on Monday, which consist of salaried employees at its software and services unit. GM said in part that it has to, quote, make bold choices and prioritize the investments that will have the greatest impact. It added half of the cuts are in the U.S. and were not made as a cost reduction measure. GM said they follow a review of operations following the departure of a former Apple executive hired last year to help lead the software and services division. He left for health reasons and had been brought in to spearhead GM's software development as the company boosted investment in electric vehicles and subscription-based services. Shares of GM rose fractionally in Monday morning trading. And that marks the conclusion of the first bulletin of the nightly business report for this week. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings around the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.